and welcome to Grounded Voices. In this episode, joining with me today is the filmmaker and the film critic Rajesh Rajamani, whose comparative essay on Kala and Nayagan won the Reading Award for the year 2019. To speak on his very recent movie, The Discreet Charm of the Savarnas, Rajesh Rajamani joins with us. So, welcome to Grounded Voices. So let me begin my question about your journey from a film critic to a film maker. Um, because there has been anti caste criticism of the Savarnas over their representation and aesthetics. Um, later, Dalit aesthetics came to the mainstream with the movies of directors like Paranjit and Nagraj Manjule. So if I may draw a parallel to this, you also began your journey as a film critic and later became a film maker. So how do you locate your own filmmaking process within this context? Well, uh, to be honest, I uh, don't locate myself anywhere. See, uh, I think that's, uh, I'm, I'm really trying to, uh, see, I, I, I'm really trying to be a filmmaker and I'm trying to tell stories about, uh, you know, a universal human experience. You know, I'm trying to document uh, the human lives as they are, uh, as we see around us, you know. And I think being a, becoming, being a film critic was in some way for me a subset of filmmaking, you know. In the process of trying to understand films, I used to watch a lot of films and trying to understand what these filmmakers uh, are doing in them and the kind of effect uh, these films are having uh, uh, as on me as a uh, as, as an average uh, audience, you know. So uh, in, in my attempt to understand films, I also tried to started writing a small you know social media posts. And when some of the social media posts got a lot of attention, then I realized okay maybe uh, there is potential to write something longer. You know, so from, it's, it's from these smaller social media posts is when uh, I started writing a little more regularly a longer pieces. But for me, it's all the same, whether it's film writing or filmmaking, it's all in my attempt to understand films. And, and, and uh, But, but I, I don't necessarily locate myself, uh, you know, in any particular uh, political, uh, you know, uh, domain or something. I think I'm merely, uh, you know, like a, like a I, I, I think the only tag I'll look at is either, either a film, uh, you know, a critic or a film essayist or a filmmaker who's trying to, uh, you know, uh, document uh, the lives of, you know, people around us in cinema. And, and as a writer, I'm just make, trying to understand what cinema is, you know, doing with respect to the world around us. You know, I, I mean, beyond this, I, I, I don't uh, uh, want to fit anywhere else. And um, can you also tell us about your personal trajectory from watching or enjoying cinema? engaging with it and later developing a critical consciousness around the medium. But I think uh, when I was young, you know, so, 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 so when you're young, you know, in, in your teens or your early twenties, I think films were, you know, I, I think even I used to watch films purely, uh, you know, as, uh, you know, as, as people make it uh, art medium, which is almost apolitical, you know. So I think uh, used to, I used to consume films as, uh, you know, just, a, you know, an entertainment or uh, you know, as uh, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a somewhat superficial uh, consumption, uh, you know, the uh, superficial consumption is what is happening. But I think over time, when you repeatedly watch films, and also when you uh, also read, uh, when when you understand the politics around uh, our society, you know, you understand the uh, you know how uh, our society is a caste society, and you know the role of gender. You know, you, when you when you understand the different uh, politics that's that's uh, you know that happening around you, and then when you rewatch the same films which you just uh, looked at a sentiment and suddenly you realize that all these films have always had a political argument, you know, something that I probably never saw it earlier. I think once you understand, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the sociology of your own uh, society, then I think you start understanding cinema better, you know, then, and I think in, in some way that's what comes out in my writing as well, you know, uh, beyond, because most film critics, you know, they, they stick to saying whether actors are good or music directors are good. It, it often becomes a, uh, appraisal of individual departments, but but it's it's it's, it's not necessarily connected to uh, you know uh, the, the the society or the history uh, or, or even the geography. You know, cinema is actually connected to almost everything. You know, like history, geography, science, uh, philosophy, psychology. But uh, our film writing often misses that. I think uh, when when I started engaging with uh, you know all uh, started very you know uh, you know very uh, you know repeatedly engaging with it, I could see that, you know, that, that film writing has to go beyond uh, just appraising the, the individual departments and, and talk about, uh, you know, how they're reflecting the society and what is that they are, uh, what is the conversation that cinema is having with 
a society and um, also you have said that usually the film criticism covers three categories that is the friday review then the retrospective reviews um, and the feminist perspective so now you have been writing extensively on contemporary tamil cinema so what is your criticism looking at and how is it received in a larger context what i am trying to write is see one thing i want to do is uh, write things which are uh, very obvious actually i mean uh, I, I, i'm not trying to discover something that's unknown or unseeable you know i'm i'm writing for something that's very obvious but i but but if i think that that's not something that's often told yet you know that's not written so often in mainstream then i think it becomes an opportunity for me to write about it you know uh, for example when you, when you talked about uh, you know the anti caste politics of elaraja's music i i feel that uh, that's not that's that's touched upon very mildly at places but that's not uh, i have not i didn't see a single piece which just talks about this anti caste politics and i thought it's it's an opportunity that's waiting to be you know uh, caught on you know like like just waiting to be written so i i think i wrote it but i write everything you know for example uh, there is a film of uh, maniratnam college the tirudadi uh, that's very uh, similar to uh, uh, one of the uh, hindi and english movie that released recently uh, fault in the stars fault in our stars uh, and and the hindi film which is based on that so i uh, even though that's that's a piece which I, was not necessarily a political piece i realized that uh, you know maniratnam had made, made a film which almost 20 years back which is which is in some way being remade in hollywood and bollywood you know so i, I wrote about that too so I, as film writer or film I, as film writer i'm merely trying to look at uh, you know uh, uh, you know writing ideas which are waiting to be written you know and 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 because they're not written i i think that's a great opportunity so it's it's not necessarily uh, uh, in the anti caste uh, uh, you know i mean uh, it's not necessarily there has to be an anti caste theme you know i mean uh, it, it just happens that anti caste perspectives are uh, again not written so often so it provides me an opportunity but but i, I think i would laugh on any opportunity which which comes you know if if there is uh, you know something if, if there is a i was also thinking you know so there's something about uh, how is how is architecture reflected in our cinema you know how is the urban architecture uh, you know reflected in cinema i was thinking the other day that that's not really written nobody has written about it and i thought why not write about it so 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 i'm merely looking at uh, you know uh, opportunities uh, where people have not written so i could use them so that's what yeah and um, the aesthetics and uh, the underlying meanings of art or parallel cinema and the likes of shyam benegal satyajit ray are mostly celebrated in the circles of upper caste savarnas whereas um, mostly the dalit bahujan movie makers engage with the popular or mainstream movies so how do you see this distinction uh, that's uh, often true i think in particular in tamil cinema uh it's not just to do with uh, you know dalit filmmakers you know i think in tamil cinema you find a lot of bahujan filmmakers you know uh, unlike say bollywood which i think bollywood is very dominated by uh, brahmin savarna filmmakers but i think in comparison uh, tamil cinema has a lot of uh, you know bahujan filmmakers as well uh, like like important filmmakers like bharathiraja and bharathiraja is a very important tamil filmmaker who's documented the uh, you know the rural and the semi urban uh, you know lives of bahujans and the different struggles uh so so it, it, it's uh it's true that you know uh you know that that you know uh, the the upper caste filmmakers often end up uh, documenting uh you know the elite life uh, but which where where the where, where the lives of the majority sort of get missed out you know they they they, they either appear as you know a security guard or a domestic worker they they they're just passing figures you know but i think uh, particularly i think in tamil cinema uh you know uh, there is a lot of bahujan filmmakers they have done important documentation unfortunately not a lot of it is written about them you know uh, it's only i think uh, uh, recently i think a lot of it is written about say ranjit and mari selvaraj and filmmakers like that but if you look at uh, almost from the 80s there have been several bahujan filmmakers uh, documenting the bahujan life you know but because it's not really uh, documented enough in english language i think uh, people outside tamil nadu are not necessarily aware of it uh but, but i think uh, so in, in as far as tamil cinema is concerned i would say the cinema actually exists but its documentation in english is what is absent you know and, and i think and because of that i think people outside tamil nadu uh, may not may not necessarily be aware of it 
Yeah, and um, coming to your movie, the discreet charm of the Savarnas, I saw some published comments that the movie highlights uh, the stereotypes associated with Dalits, ignoring the fact that the movie was wholly about Savarnas and their casteist imaginations. So, do you think there is an attempt to change uh, the focus of your movie from what it really talks about? I think I think more than my movie. I think uh, whoever you know whoever you know sees it that way. I think uh, they are uh, very. Com- I think people have got comfortable into looking at caste as something that's only to do with the lower caste. You know, uh, they 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 don't want. They almost have given a caste class certificate to them. You know, so when 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 the gaze is turned towards them, I think this is their resistance towards that. You know, the the, the spotlight being turned to them. So they are trying to redirect the spotlight towards who they are. You know, usually. Uh, uh, you know, comfortable and convenient. You know, dealing with. You know, so they want to make it about the lower caste. So I think it's it's some way. Uh, I'm, I'm, maybe it's a subconscious thing or a conscious thing. But either way, it, it's. I think it reflects their resistance to uh, to the gaze that's that's turned towards them. But in fact, it, in my film, if I if you think about it, uh, the the whole the idea of finding a Dalit character is often an excuse. You know, that's not the central theme at all. You know, like it could have been anything, but I chose something which could be dramatic. You know. Uh, that's chosen for a dramatic. That, that's more a dramatic excuse for me to put these upper caste characters uh, to have a conversation between them. You know, so 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 the, so the Dalit character is is, is nearly an he, he, the, he or she is not the central point of the film, but rather an excuse to uh, see these uh, uh, upper caste film crew talk within themselves. You know, yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm coming to my final question. Now there are recent alternate mediums like YouTube, TikTok, which are rich with Bahujan content creators and performers. So how do you evaluate these new mediums? I, I think I think it, it's certainly uh, you know it's, 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 I think TikTok is, is often uh, you know it, it's 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 a it's, it's a smaller subset of the filmmaking that's happening already on the phones. You know. I think when 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 the, the, the phones became, it was possible to uh, get very qual- good quality videos, and you know it's possible to edit and do even add some music to it. I think a lot of youngsters, you know, uh, started you know making films. It almost became like a, a blog, you know, like just the, the moment the blog happened, you know, everybody started writing. You know, until then writing was such a big deal. You know, you have to be an important person with important networks and contacts to get something published. But the moment blog, the blogs, or you know, the the the, the social media variant started, it became almost everybody, every one of us became a writer. You know, so I think, uh, you know, you know, uh, TikTok, or I, I think the phone becoming the uh, uh, way to documents, you know, capture cinema, has made almost every one of us filmmakers. You know, uh, which, which which is how it should be. You know, I think it certainly has democratized uh, the process of filmmaking, and uh, we're not so intimidated. I, I think nobody, I think. Youngsters, particularly, they're, they're not intimidated with uh, the process of filmmaking at all, you know, because uh, it's like it's it's a foreign medium and a film, film. We didn't invent the film; it's come from you know the white man, and and, and it's still uh, uh, it, it's become extremely accessible and democratic to us. And I think that's a, a good thing to happen. Thank you so much for speaking to Grounded Voices. That was Rajesh Rajamani at Two Circles Thank you.